Hi, I am Dr. Zul. How may I help you today? Hi, um, I need help with the skin condition I had recently. Ooh, let me have a look. Um, how do you feel right now? Recently, I feel tightness in my skin, especially on my fingers, hands, feet, and face. And you can see here, I have the red spots over my hands and face. Oh yeah, it is. So, is it itchy or painful to you? Yeah, sometimes some parts will swell and be itchy. I see. Uh, and do you have any other symptoms that seem to be annoying to you? Well, I'm not sure if they are related, but sometimes I might have heartburns, fecal incontinence, and feel bloated. Oh, and also to my fingers, they may turn white, blue, or red, and I feel painful or numbness sometimes. Hmm. How about some respiratory problems? Do you experience shortness of breath, dizziness, or decreased exercise tolerance? And do you feel like your legs are swollen? Yes, exactly. I'm so out of breath sometimes, and I do feel like my legs are swollen as if there's fluid trapped inside. Alright, that is a condition known as edema, whereby excess fluid is trapped around your leg tissues. So, let me ask you one last question before I can confirm my diagnosis, okay? Okay. Do you feel like your eyes and mouth are both dry? Yeah, it feels like I could barely have any tears, even if I'm emotionally crying deep inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you can still joking around, huh? Let's be optimistic about it, okay? Alright, I think you might have a condition known as the scleroderma. Now, don't be shook yet. Because I will explain to you what is that and we will have some medications for you, okay? Okay, sure. So, scleroderma is basically a disease that will cause your skin to thicken and harden. Which means scar tissue might build up. Of course, it affects not only the skin that you can see. It affects your internal organs too and that is why you will experience all the heartburns, shortness of breath and whatnot. Oh, really? Yeah. The culprit behind the condition might be your own immune system, but it also includes some genetics and environmental triggers. Although there is still no cure for this disease, do not worry. As I promise, I will give you something that will slow the progression and manage it well. Well, that's a lot. But doctor, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Why am I the one to get it? Do I possess a higher risk? Hmm, that is quite hard to say but... According to the statistics, women will be more likely to be affected compared to men. I see. Mm -hmm. um, how about my age? I'm in my 30s. Is it a risk factor to the disease as well? And is my occupation one of the contributing factors as well? I work in a lab full of chemicals by the way. Is this counted as an environmental factor? And I do have family members suffering from SLE. Just now you say the defectors, right? Is this considered? Hmm, there is quite a lot of questions, but that is okay because I will answer one by one. Seems like your guesses are correct. Firstly, your age now is one of the contributing factors as scleroderma affects mainly women in their 20s to 40s. As you said, your job might be one as well when you are exposed to chemicals and solvents. And you are also right on the genetic factor part. Oh, now I know. Does everyone who gets it suffer from the same scleroderma? Or there are a few types and mine belongs to which type? There are two types of scleroderma, namely localized and systemic scleroderma. What basically differentiates them is the site being affected. Localized scleroderma only affects the skin while systemic scleroderma affects both the skin and the internal organs. Yours is considered systemic scleroderma since you experience signs and symptoms like heartburn and shortness of breath. Okay, um, doctor, could you do something to help me with this? I'm still young though. Yeah, sure. But you need to keep in mind that there is no cure for scleroderma. So, we will give some treatments that decrease the severity of your symptoms and to prevent additional complications. We will usually give combination therapy as your diseases can actually have many symptoms at a time. Okay, um, doctor, I would like to know more about the treatment. Maybe you can explain first the treatment for my skin condition 
as it is the most appealing right now. Sure. To treat your hardening and tightening of the skin, we usually will recommend some topical medications for you. Firstly, I would like to recommend you to use some moisturizers to prevent your skin from drying out and soften your hardened skin. Another alternative that you may want to give a try is nitroglycerin. It may relax your smooth muscle and improve your blood flow so that sores in your finger can heal. But you must be aware that it may give some side effects like dizziness, rapid heartbeat, and blurred vision. If the side effects persist, you can notify me again. Oh, I see. But how about the treatment to relieve my digestive problems? My heartburn and bloating always give me discomfort. Hmm. To relieve your digestive problems, we always recommend you to take antacids like Gaviscon. It is effective in relieving your heartburn and indigestion. I will also recommend you to take Esomeprazole or Famotidine. Both medications are effective in reducing excessive acid secretion in your stomach in order to treat conditions like heartburn and also indigestion. Wow, you explained it so well. Thank you. Now, I am relieved that my heartburn problem will be resolved. Oh, before I forgot, do you have any suggestion to treat my fingers? I told you earlier, right, that my fingers may sometimes turn white, blue or red and I can even feel the pain. What is that exactly? And is there anything I can do to treat it? Good question. For your information, the appearance of your fingers is related to some condition called Raynaud's disease. It is a problem that causes decreased blood flow to your fingers when you are cold or stressed. To treat them, usually we will give medication to relax your blood vessels so blood can flow easily. I would prefer nifedipines or nitroglycerin patches, but some patients may develop ulceration on their fingers. If this were to happen to you, please refer to the hospital again. You may need local wound care and prolonged cause of appropriate antibiotics. Okay, now I see. Um, is there any simple practice that I can do at home to treat it, doctor? Yes, of course. During the cold demands, it is important to keep your core body temperature warm. You must dress appropriately by wearing multiple layers of warm clothing, warm boots, thick gloves as well as cover your face and head. You can also soak your hand in warm water frequently, especially during your first attack of Raynaud syndrome. And most importantly, you must always exercise to improve your blood circulation as well as to keep your joints flexible. It is important to protect your joints. As some of my patients, actually they also had scleroderma before and they had also developed joint pain. Wow, I'm surely going to practice that at home. Oh yeah, may I know if there is anything I can do to relieve my tightened skin except from your suggested medication just now? Yeah, sure. To relieve your dry or stiff skin, you must apply lotion and sunscreen regularly. Lotions will maintain skin's hydration levels, keeping the skin healthy, soft and supple. You must also avoid hot baths or exposure to strong soaps and household chemicals. They might irritate and further dry out your skin. Oh, now I realize the importance of applying lotion and sunscreen. I always keep them during my skincare routine. Anyway, I'm just curious if that dietary plan has any influence on this disease. If so, what dietary plan should I follow to relieve my symptoms? Yes, a good dietary intake can contribute to the recovery of your scleroderma. Aside from eating healthy foods to get the proper amounts of vitamins and nutrients, it is also important to eat foods that do not aggravate existing stomach problems. For example, you must avoid food that may cause heartburn such as spicy food and caffeinated drinks. Not only that, you must also drink a lot of water and increase the intake of high fiber foods such as whole grain bread and broccoli to cut down on your constipation. Wow, now I've gained a lot of new knowledge on proper dietary management. But if you don't mind doctor, I still have one last question for you. Okay. You have mentioned earlier, right, that my Raynaud's disease might be due to cold and stress. So, I guess, if I could manage my stress better, I might be able to reduce the occurrence of Raynaud's disease, right? So, do you have any advice for me on stress management? I felt quite stressed recently. Exactly. 
you got the point. Stress can play a part in reducing your blood flow, as well as affect many other aspects of your emotions and health. So, it is important to learn how to manage your stress well. For me, the most important key point is, you must get an adequate sleep and rest. You must at least sleep for 8 hours a day to calm and restore your body to be ready for another day. You may also practice some relaxation therapy such as yoga, meditation, or deep breathing technique. But one more thing, you must find a good social support such as your family and friend and spend more time with them because they will always listen for you and they will always be there for you as it is a natural way to calm you and lower your stress. Thank you so much, doctor, for your perfect explanation. Now, I understand better about my current disease and all my fear has gone. I will surely follow all your advice and recommendations. You're most welcome. If you have any doubt or your symptom is getting worse, do not hesitate to contact me, okay? Okay, see you later, doctor. Have a nice day. Have a nice day too. Bye-bye.